Hi, I'm Cheryl Waters, and you're listening to Live on KEXP at Home. Thank you so much to all of our wonderful KEXP supporters for making these live sessions possible. We get to talk to some of our favorite bands in the world, and you're just about to meet one of mine. It's Dry Cleaning. Welcome. Thanks. Hi. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hi all the way from <laughs> South London, Florence, Lewis, Tom, and Nick. It is so great to see you. I can't believe you were the last band we had live in studio here at KEXP. We've been doing these wonderful sessions, over 100 now, at home streaming. So it's amazing that we can continue to bring live music into people's lives. But it's so surreal to be looking at you a uh, year and I think eight days since you were last in studio here. It's, it's, you're a sight for sore eyes. How's it been? <laughs> Thanks for having us back you. so soon. Yeah, yeah. We seem to have been the last everywhere, which makes, it, <laughs> makes me feel like it was us. <laughs> we cause a lot of problems. You were in the midst of what I think was your first U.S. tour when everything closed down. I mean, did you cut your tour short? You had to miss shows, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. We we were supposed to be playing South by Southwest, but uh, obviously that didn't happen in the end. And uh, so, yeah, but we, we managed a good week, <laughs> a week and a couple of days in the U.S., but we really, we made the most of our time, definitely. But uh but yeah, it, it was a real shame. It was it was quite a sad moment. Well, what are your some of your favorite memories of that short week long tour? Oh, it was amazing, wasn't it? Amazing, guys! It was it was amazing. We we had such a beautiful time. It was it got quite sort of apocalyptic towards the end in Los Angeles. It was raining the whole time, and the shows were being cancelled, and we were desperately trying to get a flight home. It but felt even like that we was in quite a disaster sort of movie. memorable. <laughs> Well, you like were in the people, right city for that. They should have been yeah. filming you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people like are feeling like they're pickup trucks with toilet paper and water, and it was raining. It felt like, yeah, we was in like the world was about to end, and I kind of guess it did. Well, you made it home safely, thankfully. And what did you all do when you get when you got home? Just shuttered stayed, in for yeah, a while. Yeah, I mean, stayed in a lot. You know, <laughs> like, it was. It was uh, a really stark kind of change to the lifestyle that we'd been leading for a couple of months, you know, doing lots of touring and then, and then, yeah, just at home, um, kind of time to reflect, I guess, in some ways and uh, time to calm down a little bit <laughs> and take it slow. But uh, yeah, it was sort of a shock to us in the same way it was a shock to everyone, really, like such a big change of lifestyle, kind of strange. Well, one of the things I'm looking forward to very much this year is the release of your new record, New Long Leg. That comes out on April 2nd, and you've been so kind to record some incredible uh, videos of some of the songs from that record for us. So let's watch a couple of those now. Here's Dry Cleaning live on KEXP at home. Enjoy.
squeezed hopefully into a short boot I carry Bob Pony You're listening to Dry Cleaning Live on KEXP at Home. That was Unsmart Lady and Leafy from the new album, New Long Leg, coming out on April 2nd. Oh my gosh, the wicked guitar work, especially on that Unsmart Lady. I just love the new record. Thank you so much for making those incredible videos for us. Tell me about making those. Where'd you go? Was that the first time that you played together in a while or have you been doing a few of these things? Yeah, we'd done we'd done quite a few of those that week, but uh, it was one of the first, you know, like first of a handful. It's quite a different thing performing for the camera in a way, like not 
not having a sort of a physical audience in that in that usual way that we do when we play live but um it's kind of you adapt you know and it's almost like a different it's almost a different skill it's kind of more something a little bit more insular about it but I think that can be quite nice and quite sort of intimate in a way we've been really fortunate to I guess our friend's very unfortunate that his music venue is not open, but as a result, we've been able to rehearse in his venue. So we've been able to get together quite a lot over the past few months and run through the set. So, but those kind of recordings felt like the closest we've been to a show because there'll be two or three people there. So it's a small show, but it's kind of still a show. So it's quite <laughs> exciting. Yeah. It's interesting that you would say that because when I was watching it, the energy that you brought to it and just even you had the ugly rock star faces and you were really getting into <laughs> the music. And I was wanting to ask you if it felt like doing a show. And then I thought not being a musician who records myself. No, it's probably maybe more akin to recording a record because, of course, you bring 100 <laughs> percent to that recording as well in the studio. When did you make this record? Um, we we recorded this uh, last summer, July and August last summer, uh, in in Wales, uh, just over the the border into Wales, um, a, a studio called Rockfield, uh, with a guy called John Parrish. Oh, I've uh, heard of him. You've heard of him. <laughs> yeah, we've heard of him as well. Uh, so that was quite um, that was quite an experience. It was also um, kind of the height of English summer, about as hot as it gets. It was really, really hot. So we were kind of on holiday. On uh, Rockfield is a farm, essentially, um, and still kind of a working farm. Uh, and it, we really were in the middle of nowhere, um, just completely isolated from the rest of the world. Um, just us, the four of us, John and uh, an engineer called Joe Jones, who's fantastic as well. Uh, for 16 days, we were there. Was it easy to get the creative juices flowing? You're out in the countryside, but you'd kind of just been through this weird little head trip with your tour being cancelled and going home and kind of, you know, bunkering down at home. What was it like to make the transition to starting the record? Did you kind of have to shake things out or were you able to kind of just get right into it? John didn't give us much time. So we met him on the first day of recording. We'd been, we'd had a few Zoom meetings, but I think the first day of meeting him, we recorded Unsmart Lady that day. Um, so we were kind of straight in. Um, there wasn't much time to kind of sit around or kind of be like, hey, I'm out of, I'm out of my bedroom for the first time in months. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like to collaborate with him? He's worked with so many incredible people. I think, of course, of PJ Harvey, and he also produced a KEXP favorite, Aldous Harding's designer record from a couple of years back, and then the list goes on. But what was the experience like working with him? What, what's the vibe he has in the studio? Yeah, it's, um, it was good. It was, uh, I think when someone like John expresses an interest in working with you, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of encouraging, you know, it's like a real kind of like a validation in a sense and it makes you sort of think like you're in sort of safe hands you know and it's like you just get you, when you meet him for the first time he really he's very sort of uh i can't i can't really think of the word but he's very just like down the line you know he's like a really straight up guy like he's just uh from day from day one it was just this is the plan like let's go from there and it just really felt like we we're in safe hands you know and yeah it was it was uh it was a good experience from right from the word go really yeah he's a really great guy I, I would add that he's he's completely unintimidating considering his his previous work um he's a super super lovely guy uh, and also rockfield is a very unintimidating place considering i don't know if you know much about the history of rockfield but it's you know sort of steeped in this ridiculous sort of rock and roll history um it's just a very friendly place, and he and John was like, yeah, super unintimidating guy. He just he just laid a, a great framework, a structure down for us to be able to be creative on top of. Um, yeah, it was, it was wonderful to work with him. It does sound kind of magical. I like to think if I was making a record, it would be nice to go out to the countryside. Kind of describe the 
pace of your days? How did they start? How long did you record? And what did you do in your off time? Were you recording during the day or late into the evenings? It was very structured, I was going to say. And uh, that was something that I think we we really responded well to, you know, like John would have quite um, quite strict times that we would start and finish, you know. Uh, we didn't really do any sort of like recording into the night kind of thing. We kind of had very civilized working hours. <laughs> and that's actually something that we all really respond well to, you know, like we we really like our like social time, time to eat and time to cook and to kind of sit together and, and chat about what we're doing and chat about other things as well. You know, like that's always been something that's been a big part of the band, having that time to rehearse, but also a healthy amount of time to, to like, you know, not work and <laughs> relax as well, you know? So that was quite an important part. We, we would usually start about nine, nine-ish and just work through and we'd have like quite a strict hour for lunch and then usually finish at like seven, you know, like very, very civilized. It was, it was, I really appreciated that. And, and, and John was really, I think it means a lot to him that, that kind of schedule, you know, to, to, to kind of, to stay sharp in a way, not, not to kind of push things until you don't know what you're listening to anymore, you know? Anyone else? Well, the, the oh, strict say... structure allowed us to, like, it, we, we had, the evenings were really important. Like, we did a lot of barbecues because the weather was amazing. And because we couldn't go to pubs because we were isolating as a unit, so every night we were cooking for each other. So each night someone would take cooking duties and maybe have, like, some hands who would help them. Or we'd all do it together. Everyone would take different roles or we'd do a barbecue. So it was kind of like that strict structure really helps that as well. I have to admit, that's what I was kind of thinking. Did you kind of have this nice little bucolic time in the evening in the countryside? Or were you working all night long and waking up bleary-eyed? <laughs> it was kind of, uh, the the, no. the evenings were kind of like a time to decompress because they, uh, we, he, you know, he had a strict structure, but he worked us hard. <laughs> like, um, there wasn't a lot of sitting around. It was like, you know, we were on it the whole time. So... Sometimes in the evening, you really had to process what you'd done that day. And you're also sort of thinking, how did I, you know, how did that go for me? Did, how, yeah, did, it, did a part that I did, did work, you know, um, what am I going to be doing tomorrow? You know, so it's kind of like the, the bits in the evening were sort of like kind of really decompressing, you know, like, so we'd eat, we'd watch TV, we'd just chat or Lewis uh, beat me at chess quite a lot. <laughs> I was playing him at chess and he, I, I, cause he, he said he'd been learning chess and I was thinking, I'll show you a thing or two. And he kicked my ass about, well, every, I think I beat you once. So uh, that wound me up and it, it, it really wound me up and got me. There's also right the table the tennis. Don't forget the table tennis. <laughs> yeah, I beat, um, I don't really play table tennis, but I managed to sort of beat him once over the whole two weeks. And it's kind of one of the best moments of my life, actually. I think. <laughs> <laughs> tell my grandkids about that I love it well, I John Parrish so is also good at I... table tennis sorry John Parrish is a shark table tennis. Table he's, a, he's amazing he's a real shark yeah. <laughs> I love it the kindly unassuming taskmaster who's good at table tennis that's the image I'm left absolutely I was so, I was so touched when I first met you by your deep friendship and the collaborative nature of the band. How have you maintained a relationship over this past year after recording was done with the forced distance and separation? It's, it's been hard. Wow. That's like, it's been really hard because, uh, you know, t there's no doubt that yeah. our band is like a sort of, it's almost familial. It's kind of like a gang. You are friends, but it is more like a family in a sense, you know, and like once you don't have that, uh, regular physical contact of being in a room and uh, being in a bus or playing a show I think it's hard to hard to replace that well you can't replace that really and then you know um, we started to have regular zoom meetings every week with our manager and everyone and that was good that kept some regularity and kept you in touch with what was happening 
But there are those times when you're on your own and you're starting to wonder, did I dream all of that? Like, did, did all of that actually happen? Do you know what I mean? It was, it was, and I, you know, I, it had, was, I had that so often. There were time, there, yeah, there are times you wake up and you felt like, did I dream all of that? And, you know, and everyone was trying to deal with that in their own way. Um, but we, we, we tried to keep busy. That was the thing. We tried to keep, as soon as we could, we went back to practicing, uh, back to writing um we had a few little projects to do like a, a sea change festival which um was meant to be a physical festival but ended up being completely digital so we recorded a little thing for that and that just gave us a, a reason to sort of keep working on things really and yeah that was it really yeah and that that recording actually inspired the album quite a lot or certain parts of the album because um we all had to record our parts but it was recording to a four track tape machine and it's kind of, it's fine for me, Tom and Flo to record our parts, but Nick doesn't have a drum kit set up in his living room. So he was using a drum machine and then that kind of changed our writing process and the drum machine started to appear more and more on tracks. And now is it three or four tracks on the album, the drum machine mm. is on. It's more like five, I think. I don't listen to those ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think eventually we will just completely get rid of Nick. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> My days are numbered. <laughs> the life cycle of the band has been truly unique in comparison to other bands. You got your start casually playing friends parties and then quickly transitioned into international attention you signed with a respected record label 4AD then in the middle of it all you have this pandemic with threw a wrench into your first international tour how have you been able to use this last year to kind of reflect and adjust to the success that you've received I mean I want to say you're like one of my favorite bands of ever <laughs> I just what? can't wow. listen to you enough. I play you pretty much every day on the this air. I'm crazy, having like a man. major love affair with dry cleaning and there's just not even that much music out there yet. I just, I'm craving more. So I cannot <laughs> wait till new long leg comes to, out. But this, this, I have this, to, sorry, this has come up a lot. It's, was, it's a really interesting question because we, we don't, we, we're not on tour at the moment. We're not in the U S we're not, we, you know, we, we're not making physical contact with anyone really um and so all of the kind of the 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 traditional kind of gauges and the the meters by which we kind of judge what's happening around us and the the the, the way you perceive what's happening you know in in popular culture uh surrounding you know what's relating to 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 our project um we we're not we're not getting that at the minute so occasionally we you know we do interviews and things like that and we talk to people like you Cheryl and you say you say these things to us which is like this is mind-blowing you know it's absolutely crazy um but we you know uh, we're sort of still just waiting to get out on the road and kind of feel that for ourselves um so it feels it's really abstract you know it's 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 kind of a surreal thing I think I'd also like add that I think if maybe if it hadn't been such an amazing experience in the US, the last year would have been, I definitely think it would have been a lot harder because like after we recorded with you at KXP, we didn't see that footage for quite a long time. But when we, it did come out um, and we saw it, it was kind of like brought back a lot of good feelings and good memories and stuff like that. And it was really good to see that. It was like a, it was a big lift, you know? And I think, uh, just a general experience the entire experience of those few weeks in the US was like it really set us up like to you know we had a we, we got a lot of mileage out of those feelings you know what I mean like definitely some of the best experiences certainly in my life and so kind of uh, that definitely got you through a lot of that pandemic for sure and just uh, you know um, just trying to hold on to the knowledge that we would come back do you know what I mean like we'd be able to come back at some point so you better come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new album, New Long Leg, is coming out in April, and you've chosen a rather ambiguous title for this record. What does New Long Leg mean to you? Um, a few things. I think the reason we like it is that it's ambiguous. I think that's like a, that's a sort of a tone that we're quite fond of in this band something that could mean many different things to different people 
or nothing at the same time, you know, could also be just something that's absurd. Tom was saying the other day that, and I really like what he said, he was talking about it being almost like a reference to a sort of a, a superhero skill or something, like somebody who has a leg that can just extend <laughs> to, to an enormous length. And uh, in my mind, I, I, I sometimes think about it in terms of um, how you feel about your own body and almost like dissociation you can feel from your own body at different times in your life and when your body changes and how, how your relationship with it changes. And um, that's kind of where where the phrase came from originally. But I also like to think of it in terms of like inanimate objects, like a table leg or a chair leg or and the idea of it being new, you know, is it a gift or is it, uh, you know, is it is it in reference to the fact that the album's new and it's a kind of a slightly new sound for us in some ways? And I just like that there's a lot of different things that spring from the from the phrase, and it's also nice to say. <laughs> it is nice to say. Well, that description fits sort of the style of your lyrics, Florence. We talked about your writing style when you were last in Seattle and how you forge bits of conversation and phrases and words when you're out in the world. And I imagine it's been a little strange not being out in the world so much and getting uh, those little snippets and connecting um, with that that inspiration and certainly not riding public transportation. And where have you discovered any new locations that have provided specifically high quality material? I think um, it's a really good point. It has it has had a noticeable effect, you know, on on my sort of. Um, ability to like be creative with words you know to have to have just less going in <laughs> you know to be to be living a more sort of solitary life but I think it gave me the opportunity to to sort of go inside to my own thoughts a little bit more and to kind of investigate some of my sort of emotional inner life a little bit more and and find ways to speak about that in a more in a more straightforward way um but but how I could do that in my, in my own sort of way of writing which which isn't very direct it's kind of can be quite uh ambiguous or maybe even evasive at times but uh yeah it was it was it was good to do that to actually be able to spend some time sort of sat down writing I hadn't really done that before I'd, I'd usually been writing on the go you know, sort of like into my phone or into a notebook or something. But as you say, like on the bus, on the train, um, wherever, you know, walking down the street, I hadn't ever really sat down and written, you know, with a blank page in front of me before. So I, I did quite a lot of that in um, during lockdown and, and it was quite inspiring. It was it was sort of, yeah, something very new for me um, and quite difficult to do as well. And, you know, I like a challenge, but um yeah, so so maybe there's a maybe there's a a more sort of sweeter, maybe slightly more sincere personal um slant to some of the lyrics on this album for that reason. The music is so powerful and you're all just so in lockstep together. Each instrument brings so much to these songs. And you know, we most often ask the vocalists or the lyricists, you know, where they get the inspiration for the songs. But I just think about how the other uh, instruments really impact me and move me emotionally. I think of the wicked guitar parts on some of these songs. And is it a weird question to ask where you get the inspiration for those? Like, Tom, where do you get the inspiration for just some of those crazy, I don't know, guitar lyrics? <laughs> uh, uh, it's a good question. I think um, d I think if you're drawn to an instrument and you play it for long enough and you, I mean, I gravitated towards the guitar um, because it, it just seemed like I could communicate things through it. You know, it, it I um, I kind of use the guitar to relax, to go into my own little world. I play the guitar a lot at home and it feels like a great way to sort of just, uh, just I don't know, yeah, kind of, go into my own little world and process thoughts and feelings and stuff like that. Um, so I suppose the inspiration for all those things comes from something that will just catch my attention. I'll just be, 
you know, I'll just chuck my hands on and just move them around. And <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like a kind of uh, organic thing. I'm not a technical player. I don't know. I can't read music and I don't know how to, um, I don't know like chords and stuff like that. It's just, uh, uh, it's a, it can be a physical thing sometimes, just the way a, a chord feels, just, just drawn to that. And then maybe if you, something will catch my attention, a hook or something or um, and, um, a, a chord sequence. And uh, from then from that point on, it's a really a, a matter of showing it to the others and then they start to respond to it. And then it's like this slow, it's like juggernaut starts to get bigger and faster and faster and starts to take off from there. And then it goes around in a circle. I'll start responding to them. And it's just, yeah, it's kind of just a very organic thing, really. I don't, I, I wouldn't say I'm not necessarily, each thing has inspiration. It's just that I, uh, I like exploring on the guitar. I like to, I, I, I play the guitar genuinely for, for pleasure. Do you know what I mean? I, I do it for myself first and foremost. And then things come from that, that I think are worth sharing with everyone else, you know, so. I love that. Well, shall we listen to a couple more songs? Sure. It's Dry Cleaning <laughs> Live on KEXP at Home. Don't bring those loafers 
That is Dry Cleaning Live on KEXP at Home. Songs from the new album, New Long Leg, coming out in April. That's Her Hippo and Strong Feelings. And bringing it back to the guitar again, Tom, that's the song I was talking about. That guitar line is like an earworm. It just bores into my head. I love it. Good. <laughs> Good. That's, what, that's what you were going for. <laughs> that's it. Uh... <laughs> that's very good if we had a, that's happened if we had a <laughs> drinking game going here we could count how many times I've said I love the new record I mean Scratch Card Lanyard just rocks my world and I'm so happy you performed that live on KEXP when you were here last year and of course you released that late in 2020 um, I love Strong Feelings which we just watched together and that came out in February and the last song on the album I've been fortunate enough to hear it before our interview today Everyday Carry, I absolutely love, and uh, Unsmart Lady, I just, I just love them all. And I'm wondering, do you have any current faves from the record? Songs you can't wait to play live in front of a live audience? Uh, I would definitely say Her Hippo is my f- favorite to play. There's something about it, like uh, I've, I've said it a lot to these guys in, in interviews lately that it. Like it's good. I said it's good that you had that reaction to it because I have an emotional reaction to it personally. Like it just seems to open up this sort of chasm of feeling. It really it gets me every time. It's really I I really I'm really what everyone else is doing in that as well. It's just uh, I really like it. There, it, we sort of started to uh, open up the ending a bit more as well. So the recording, the record version of that is sort of stops, um, but we started to add more. And it's just grown more naturally. I feel like it's probably going to grow again at some point. So I can't wait to play that live and see where it goes. It feels, it feels like when that happens, when we're in the room playing it, it's just going to grow. It's like its own thing. It's growing. And you're just trying to, you're just trying to hold on and ride it. <laughs> well, I imagine you can't wait to get in front of a live audience to play these songs again. I'm so excited to see you. And did I mention that I love the record? <laughs> you didn't actually. Um, you keep saying how you feel yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, take a drink of water, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you'd like. I'll let you go now, but you promised to come back again and visit us here at KEXP. I can't wait until you're out on tour again, and for the new everyone to hear the new record, new long leg. It's great to see you. Thanks, Cheryl. You too. Thanks you so too, much, Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you to everyone for tuning in and supporting KEXP for these live at home sessions. It's been so fun to talk with our favorite artists and we'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe to KEXP's YouTube channel so you can get updates about all our great new releases. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.